This is Twit. So the why? Tell me what the Wi-Fi pineapple is, Alex. Uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple is a hardware device you can buy that uh, runs its own operating system. So it's a little box with a bunch of antennas popping out of it. Uh, you can hook up to your computer, and you, it has this nice little web interface and lets you do lots of really interesting and mostly illegal stuff with Wi-Fi. Uh, so, uh, and I know the guy who sells it. <laughs> yeah, is, is Hack5 been Yeah, uh, Yeah, a good friend. Ha- yeah, he's a good friend. The Hack5. I used to work with uh, Hack5. Yeah. Um, uh, and I have mis- I have mixed feelings about this. They they say it's for pen testing, and, and it is used for that. And I have used it for that. I, I use it mostly for educational purposes, right? So when I teach Wi-Fi in my fall classes about cybersecurity, yeah. my spring classes about trust and safety, but in the fall I, I teach a cyber class and I do a demo uh, where I intercept people's connections and pull up. <laughs> One of the interesting things you can do with it is you know. So you're you're the fun professor. Uh, <laughs> yes, my my ratings uh, my. My reviews are really good until I get fired, right? Like that's the, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that's the pleasure. Uh, so one of the cool things it does is, you know, something people don't really understand is that when you add a device to a Wi-Fi network um, and it remembers it, it will beacon for that. It will look for the beacon in the future. So your computer is effectively constantly saying, hey, anybody here is Starbucks? Hey, anybody here is name of my home network and such. So like one of the fun demos I do is while I'm giving the Wi-Fi lecture, I'm sniffing in the background. Of course, all of the students, there's about 200 students in that class. They all have laptops open. 90% of them are probably not paying attention. Something, again, I can figure out with the Wi-Fi pineapple. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I see you browsing uh, your, uh, your, your, your uh, yeah. blue sky page. How is page. TikTok today? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and uh, when they, uh, you know, at the end, I show, you know, whose network is this, whose network is this, and you have people raising their hand of, like, that's my parents' network, that's the hotel I just went to and such. So it does all kinds of interesting stuff. Like, one of the things you use it for is to pretend to be wireless network. So it has a radio that you can push perhaps a little bit beyond what the FCC says is a uh, acceptable level of power output uh, in the unregulated spectrum. And so what you can do is uh, if you're in a, a public network, you can have it broadcast at a higher uh, decibel level and take over and other and people will associate to it and then it will route all that traffic over uh you can have it go over like a, a gsm card or you know lte or over a you know a hard wire if you have it um and then you can sniff all of that traffic you watch it as it goes out stuff. to the internet yeah, they yeah. still think they're on the internet but they're going through right. you all stuff you can do with like a properly configured linux laptop and such right. but like this just makes it all easy and because it has its own cpu you have your computer attached you tell it what to do and then you can walk away and you can leave it there yeah. so that's often I, we have used it for penetration tests you um, a good place for it especially if you have a battery pack attached to it, uh, is the restrooms in the lobby, right? So if you can use a restroom in a lobby of a building uh, and they have a drop ceiling, you can go put it in the drop ceiling and let it oh, people, uh, take over Wi-Fi. So this is my mixed feelings about this. And, you know, I've never talked to Darren about it, but uh, uh, it's 120 bucks. Yes. A script kitty could use this. And that's my problem is if you're going to do it with a configured Linux laptop, you know what you're doing. Not necessarily, but yes, I, <laughs> it, it is one of these interesting tools where effectively almost anything you do with it's illegal unless you're doing it in a Faraday cage, right? So right. Like doing most of the stuff. <laughs> but it's legal possible. to sell it, even though anything you yes. could do with it would be illegal. Yes. Isn't that funny? Freedom, man. Freedom. So so Shira Ovid at the Washington Post had a piece today saying five things you shouldn't worry about. Number one was using Wi-Fi in a public space. Okay. That's changed Lighter a little bit. I mean, it, since the days of Fire Sheep where you were sending unencrypted traffic and somebody could impersonate you. Right. But this thing, as 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 Alex just explained, but let me say it. So, Jeff, you were just at a hotel somewhere and using their Wi-Fi. You still have that in your list of Wi-Fis that you've mm-hmm. accessed. Mm-hmm. The pineapple can impersonate it and can be stronger than the coffee shop Wi-Fi. So your laptop, without any, you know, talking to you, will say, oh, hey, no we're boy, back no at the hotel. Way. Yeah. Let's check in. Uh, it's a better signal. I mean, things are better now in that HTTPS has become pretty much ubiquitous. Yeah, thanks right? to and Google, HTTPS thanks to Google, everywhere. Thanks to, yep. you know, uh, HTTPS Anywhere, yep. uh, like yep. plugin makers. Um, thanks to Let's Encrypt, the EFFs project to give Which it makes it easier to be SSL. Honestly, yeah. thanks to Ed Snowden. I mean, we don't want to do a whole <laughs> Snowden thing. I have mixed feelings here. But, like, you know, there was a massive move to encrypt, and I, I saw a bunch of that. I was a CISO at Yahoo!, Yahoo would not have done all the work necessary, which was very expensive and very difficult to encrypt all of Yahoo sites to HTTPS all the time if it wasn't for the Snowden disclosure. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, it, it turned out it was very difficult at, at for 
for anybody who wasn't Google and therefore in a fully contained ecosystem, because there's a huge ecosystem problem. Like every bit of JavaScript you pulled in, every analytics platform you used, right? All that stuff had to go to HTTP. And it was all distributed on a bunch of servers. Yeah. You may not even have owned all the servers. Right, right. And so it took years to get yeah. there. And it basically happened because of the Snowden disclosures, because it turned out that- I thought it was FireSheep. FireSheep seemed like the, the tipping point when, when any idiot could go into a right. coffee shop and steal your Facebook But you could have done for a long <laughs> time before that using a variety of tools but oh, yeah. tools of like you had to be running linux you had to yeah tweak the kernel a little well, bit Well, see that's my point with the yeah. pineapple as soon as it gets easy yeah so and then there's this <laughs> flipper zero which is something more uh recent the multi-tool yeah. device for geeks yes it's fun do you own it I sounds like you might own one brianna <laughs> well i i don't own one but i've certainly looked at the coverage of this and you know before my comments i really want to stress that you know, we have criminalized white hat hacking, like in the That's United true. States. But it always has often been. My it, friend uh, Russell Schwartz was working uh, at uh, mm -hmm. Intel, did a little uh, freelance pen testing at Intel and got thrown in jail for it. A hundred percent. You remember when the AT&T thing happened a few years ago with the iPhone, right? And people, uh, basically, they tried to cover up by uh, basically uh, uh, getting people charged. They've right. done uh, basically uh, pen testing uh, and trying to report vulnerabilities. We've seen that level levied politically. So just my blanket comment here is, look, as a policy, I'm 100 percent white hat hacking. I think we need ways to indemnify people that are out there doing what I consider that are public service that's in the interest of national security. That said, you know, if you look at the Pineapple Zero and some of the things you can do with it, uh, you know, you have people with no training whatsoever that can go unlock cars. They can change the, uh, you know, the price of gas at a gas station, right? Oh, wait a minute. I, I want to know more about that. That's cool. This was reported by something I saw. Uh, but the bottom line with this is like an individual gas station. They don't have a pen testing department, yeah. right? Yeah. They don't. They're, they're so what the deal really... is, you buy a tank of gas, then then tell them, hey, by the way, I've right, just uh, found right. a vulnerability. Oh, 100%. In your, in your pump. They'll give it to you free. <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's I, I get that this is a tool that can be used for good things, but I also think it is made in a way that, like, in introduces these vulnerabilities to people I have no real way to act on it. So the right? Flipper Zero was, I think it was a right. Kickstarter. It was somehow mm -hmm. right. that, funded. That's the one I'm thinking of, correct. Yeah, and it, and it's a, a really um, kind of an IoT. It's kind of designed for the, not for Wi-Fi, but for the, you know, the sub one gigahertz Yeah, it's, uh, it's effectively, so it's not, it doesn't do Wi-Fi. Uh, like you said, it's sub one gigahertz. There's a ton of spectrum used for IoT systems. Zigbee, um, LoRa is one. So there's a, there's a bunch of uh, standards that people use for their gardening systems and their home alarm systems. Or opening and the parking garage parking gate. Parking garage or, or the or a garage door, right? Or a garage, garage door, door. Yeah, so or your doorbell. Um, yeah. RFID on your cards. This is effectively a super cheap version of the USRP, right? So, like, we've had software-defined radio for a while. They've often been very expensive. What these folks did is they built a software-defined radio platform. They limited its uh, frequency range to, to make it cheaper um, and then put, like, a cool little GUI on it and create a community. So there's this community of people that you can download programs onto that a little SD card and, and pop it in. So I use the Flipper Zero. I demonstrate to my Stanford students. I copy one of their uh, badges. Um, yeah, so you can go around the <laughs> campus as them. Yeah. yeah. So Fuck, professor, at it right? again. Just like, Honestly, this more points up the, the, the flaw in the, uh, in the badges than it does... Yeah. anything else. Well, right? actually, can I say something about that really quickly? When I ran for Congress, one of the things I, I really got a crash course in is the way that large data and things like this, um, I always say misused by police departments, but there's certainly asymmetric defense that can be done by police departments, right? Because they do have the power to go and like Google uh, your entire like history of your Android phone and find out everywhere you've been where the defense, um, your defense that may be prohibitively, uh, you know, expensive. So it's really easy to see something like this, like someone stealing your badge and then like making it look like you're part of a crime, right? Then how do you like go and prove your innocence there? I mean, it's it's very easy to imagine scenarios and there's not a clear policy direction here forward because we don't want to criminalize like, you know, pen testing and looking for vulnerabilities. At the same time, this is something that has a tremendous um, 
capability for misuse. And I, I truly don't know where to go from here. Uh, it's only 169 bucks. I'm ordering one right now because I think we could have oh some boy. some fun oh boy. some fun with it. Oh boy. <laughs> um, should these be illegal? No, no, <laughs> okay. no. But I, again, it's not something. I mean, the flipper is interesting because it doesn't have a humongous amount of range. Um, you have to be. It's kind of you have to be proximate. You have to be reasonably proximate. Yeah. Um, but it, it still certainly could be used uh, to, to steal cars and such. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Well, Hyundais particularly. Those are really easy to steal, I hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I drove through the city, so, you know, I, I cut off a couple of catalytic converters because it's what you do. Yeah, you just uh, pick, pick them up and take them with you. You never know when you might need an extra, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's an interesting uh, time we live in. Um, fortunately, the good news is most people are honest. Yes, it's only yes. that small. I don't. I don't know. One tenth of one percent that have the larceny in their hearts. Ruin it for everybody. Then they ruin it for everybody. <laughs> so only sell to the good people. Just like you only let the good people on the blue sky. Exactly. Where you don't need trust and safety. Yeah. Hey, we should talk Linux. It's the operating system that runs the internet, but your game consoles, cell phones, and maybe even the machine on your desk. But you already knew all that. What you may not know is that Twit now has a show dedicated to it: the Untitled Linux Show. Whether you're a Linux pro, a burgeoning sysadmin, or just curious what the big deal is, you should join us on the Club Twit Discord every Saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv slash club twit and sign up. Hope to see you there. <laughs> 